All of the stuff that you've told me so far is you've worked with people who couldn't handle this dog. Welcome to beautiful Montana. Today on this episode, you guys, we are working with a two-year-old, very reactive dog. This dog is reactive to people. This dog is reactive to other dogs. This dog has been through several training camps. This dog has had a bite history. And so the owners are desperate to get this beautiful, powerful, young Borble under control. And that's what we're here to do. This video, you guys, is absolutely packed with a ton of information on how to develop and build the best relationship with your dog as well as why do dogs become reactive or aggressive, and more importantly, how to fix, manage, control, and do the exercises needed to overcome and to modify this reactivity and aggression. Put a lot of time and effort into this channel. If you guys haven't yet, do me a solid favor. All you have to do to support the channel, you guys, like this video, drop a comment in the comments below, subscribe to my channel, turn on all your notifications. Of course, if you're interested in watching videos like this at least twice a week, let's get into the video. So Cooper is almost two years old. He's a bull bred Borable. He was doing great as a puppy. COVID hit, he started uh, lunging at people, at dogs, and then he nipped at our vet. And so our vet was like, well, you better get a tr trainer. And so we got our first trainer who thought he should be euthanized and pretty much did a lot of treat stuff from what we read online. And we were pretty distraught about thinking about euthanizing him. So we got went to another trainer and he went to boot camp for a month. And we did not realize, but a lot of abuse and wrong techniques they were using the prong collar yanking on it, kind of almost strangling them, and we still had the what? same problem. And they took him again to another camp and they were supposed to desensitize him. And unfortunately, even by the admission of the trainer, he just stayed in a crate, we think 20 hours a day. He came back with rashes and all sorts of stuff. He didn't get desensitized. He didn't really get exposure to other dogs or people. And so he came back even worse. So what is your ultimate goal? I would like to be able to introduce him to people. I would like to be able to go walk up and down the neighborhood, go walk up and down trails. If he doesn't want to meet strangers, I want to be able to like be in an area with right. people, you know, so that he doesn't feel, you know, threatened. We feel like we're trapped inside the house, like in the fence here. We want to be able to take him out and feel safe. And So how many people have been handling him since the last time you worked with your past trainer? Nobody, because I'm deathly afraid of him. And not yeah, him I know. towards me, but if he gets loose and goes over there and eats one of the kids next door, that's not good. Yeah, the biggest thing here and the, the biggest objective is to be realistic with what we want. And for me, like I've worked with Borvals before and they're powerful, strong, stubborn breeds. They like their people. They like some of other people, but they're really not, in, in my experience, have been like the overly friendly golden retriever that's gonna run no. up and jump on everybody. So my goal would be having the e-collar. Living in Montana is like peanut butter and jelly. And then same thing with just the obedience and the control is making sure that you can control them. Making sure that you guys also know how to introduce him to people if necessary. Being able to loose leash walk him to pass other people, other dogs with that control without having to worry about what's gonna happen. Everything that you've done with the past trainers, not taking anything away from them, but they haven't given you the tools and the exercises necessary to be successful for this particular dog. All right, so they're gonna go grab him right now. When you get any dog that's protective, you do not wanna meet in the house, in the yard, or even on the property at all. So we're gonna walk down a little bit, we're gonna meet up with them, and we're gonna see how it goes. Yeah, so the neighbor's dog just came running out, and we're already seeing what we're dealing with with him. He's already fired up, so kind of puts us at a disadvantage, but hey, this is reality. This is what we need to do to get these guys to be successful. Heel, back. All right, come on. Nope. Oh, no. No, down, Cooper, down, stay. All right, let's walk again. All right, now let's just slow down a little bit. Let's just put him into a sit. Cooper. The reason why we're doing this is just to create like neutrality, if you will. With dogs like this, there's a part of me that wants to immediately just handle the situation. Like normally, 
I stand my ground, take the leash, correct the dog, say, hey, that's not happening. I changed my techniques a little bit on doing that because it doesn't help you. Once I correct him, you lose the ability and the power of learning how to introduce somebody new. A lot of times when people want to get introduced to a dog, they're dog lovers, and I am. But I've been working with dogs professionally enough to know that if you want to be friends with the dog who doesn't really want to be friends with you, yeah. is you ignore them. You just have to play it as cool as you can and act like, hey, it's no big deal and then the dog, because of their animals, no big deal. So what you wanna do is you wanna create confidence through calmness. Every second that I'm next to him is creating points for us. Now let me just take the leash, and now I'm gonna go and you just stay right there and we're just gonna see what he does. Okay. I can tell he's looking at me and I'm, I'm avoiding. Nope, I don't want any problem with you, man. I'm good. And I move away and then this comes down and I'm just, yeah. so I'm not here yep. and I'm not getting close to him, I'm, si I'm neutral. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do some behavioral temperament tests slash relationship building stuff by creating a behavioral compass. What I'll do is I'll go this way, good. And then I'll come back this way, just leash pressure. But what's happening is, is he's following the leader, if you will. The goal is, is that, that's the goal. Okay. Did you see that? Where yeah, he was he like, oh, that. I'm with you, I'm with you, yeah. without any leash pressure. So okay. if I come this way, he follows me without any pressure. I want you to watch his, his tail here. So I come out like this, Cooper, sit. Yes, good sit. So see that little tail wag yeah. there? In my opinion, I think we're just about ready to really break through here. Oh look, a moose silhouette. See his hackles going up? Yeah. So like when he sees something like the moose, we jump to leave it, go down and pull them. At what point do we let them get curious? I don't see any reason why we couldn't let them get curious. A, it's not a real moose, so we're, I'm not, we're not in danger. And B, it also creates more, hey man, hey man, remember that one moose we saw together? Like it creates that, that relationship a little bit more. I give dogs more curiosity leverages than anything. And I think that's what we, we don't allow. Yeah, I would allow should. more of that because he's the type of dog that has been told what he can and can't do in situations where probably was not appropriate. You know, he's the kid that's like never been outside and you're like, hey man, go play in the mud. You know, let him explore. Yeah, sit. Yes, good boy. Let's go, buddy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. See, now we're in. There, so off to the races, guys. So relationship first, training second with a dog like this. He sees your neighbor here, so this is a good situation to maybe think about, okay, when do we start putting some obedience in? And good, now watch kind of like some of the things I'll do with a new person. Cooper, Cooper. We're training our dog, yes. so yeah. Good, <laughs> sit. Yes, buddy, good trot. Look at that big man, look at that big man. Good job, Coops. I took the conflict out of the situation. I understand dogs and wolves are, are different. Trust me, I, I understand that. But their behavior and some of the way that they interact with each other is certainly similar. In most wolf packs, um, they have like a joker wolf, which will be literally a wolf that's just a clown to, to eliminate conflict between other wolves. So basically with him, he's like, hey, there's somebody over there. And I go, let's go, dude, who cares? And he's like, all right, fine, who cares? And, and then we just rolled with it. Like, so see here, he hears the small dog that wouldn't, stand a chance. He's loaded here. So I'm not gonna say, hey, don't ever look, because okay. that's a dog that's saying, hey, who that, are you? That's what we would do. We would I go know. down and we would do all so that stuff. So what I would do is just say, Cooper, let's go. Yeah, okay. good man. Okay. And then we're off. Heel. Directional change. Heel. So this is how you're gonna get him engaged with you. Because we're walking on his road, he's more heightened. And I think he's also used to getting stimulated and aggravated and frustrated when you tell him to heal because heal usually means there's something going on. It does, and we that's the way we use it too. Every time I yeah. tell him heal, he's like, where are they? Where are those mother effers? So I'm gonna try to change that just a little bit here. So I'm gonna make this more about the obedience than, hey, there's somebody here, because there's not. Yeah. Good heal, good. Cooper, heal. Good heal, good job, heal. Good man. Now he's turning with me, good heal. What we need to go over now is control, obedience, relationship with you guys. I want you to show me what you do out here with them. So a couple things. You're not making it realistic. Pay attention to where you're going. So you want to be more like actually meaningful. Right now you're going, hey, do this. 
and you're watching. Just ask him to heal and just move. See, now that you're now that you're looking where you're going, you can you can expect him to follow the leader here. Where before, if you guys are both looking at each other, who's driving the car? So you gotta make sure that you're working and then breaking, and then working and then breaking. We want him to be a dog like we did outside on the walk where he's being a dog, but at the same time, when we tell him, hey buddy, it's time to perform, he needs to. When you put him into a heel, it's like a manual transmission. You just put him into gear right there. We're talking, of course, he doesn't understand English, so he's sitting there like, whew, all right, look at the time, I'm out. And he walks off the clock, and then we just let him do that. That's gonna bubble up other places, and you gotta be careful of that. The more tight and the more tension you give him and the pressure you give him, the more he's gonna get built up. If you have an unrealistic expectation of a behavior such as heal outside in reality and you're constantly doing this, you're just gonna have a really frustrated relationship outside and it's gonna, it's gonna detonate everything else that you guys are having problems with. Good heal. I'm okay with this. Yeah. Good heal. But you gotta proof it out, so make sure when you slow down, good heal. So this is exactly what we were talking about. Heel. All right, here, let me see. We're gonna redirect him back up this way. We're gonna work on that with the e-collar at some point. Okay. So I don't like correcting dogs with any correction collar physically when they get that frustrated because that's where you're gonna end up with redirection. Oh. Here, just keep walking. Um, please get your dog. Get your dog. Please get your dog. Please get your dog. Please call your dog. You want me to take the leash? Settle down. Settle down. It's okay, let's go. But he's just he's just so strong that we're gonna need something to knock him out of that. Because it took almost everything for for me to hold him back. You know, the definition of insanity, <laughs> doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So he flies at the end of the leash like a linebacker, and you're sitting there just trying to pull him back, correct him. He doesn't, it doesn't phase him. When he gets that built up, he's that powerful and that he's that strong. There's some dogs who don't regard the prong at all. The prong collar only works when you can activate it and it only distributes pressure. So it's not like the harder he pulls, the more corrected he's gonna get. The, the prong collar doesn't work like that. It disengages actually when you pull hard on it. So you have to be able to pop it. When you get a dog that powerful and that big and that reactive and protective when there's other dogs, that's as real as it gets. He's not gonna care about cookies. He's not gonna care about redirection. The e-collar here has a pager on it. So if you feel that, and now I know it seems like, oh, it's not that much, but for dogs, they've never felt vibrate like that before. But my goal is for you guys to be able to control him in that scenario. This is a sound box. So basically when they start using the remote or I use the remote, this is gonna make a noise. So when you're using the remote collar, it's absolutely critical that you're timing everything perfectly so the dog really grasps and captures exactly what the e-collar means, and that's the way you wanna do it. So we're gonna start and fire this baby up. It's much like our communication verbally. If I'm over here, right, and you guys are just there, and I go, what do you guys think that is? I'm obviously talking to you. Like, yeah. something's coming out of my mouth, and I'm trying to have a conversation with you. So this is the same thing. You're just pairing the e-collar with your verbals. And the reason why you do that is because you want him to know that that stimulation is you. When we use corrective levels to get him under control, he needs to know how to shut it off. So if we're talking here, Cooper, sit. Good sit. And he's releasing that pressure through compliance. And what that is for him is like this. Hey, Tom. Yeah? And it shuts off. Hey, what? What are you doing? What? The more you have that conversation with him with the e-collar, it's gonna make sense when we correct him on higher levels when he's going after another dog because he's felt it all day long or all week or all month or all year long. He knows where it's coming from and he knows how to shut it off. Tap, tap, tap. See his ears went up there just a little bit. That's right where you want it, where he just registers it. Now again, a lot of people have a hard time with like, what the hell's the point of just getting his attention? And if you can pair in this stimulation with your verbals, you can reach him from three fourths of a mile. Now, if he's really gassed up and excited about something, you gotta meet him. So I might turn, heel, tap, tap, tap. Yes, good. And when he gets into position, I release it. Good, heel, and just tap, heel. So here I can, I can heel. Release. Good. Just a little bit of pressure. Heel. Good. 
Now, if he starts going down, but you don't need to be hitting him again. Right when they commit, there's no other pressure. Like if I was like, hey, walk over there, and you started walking over there, I'm not like, hey, walk over there. You're like, I'm going. <laughs> so when you're introducing the e-collar, like you guys just saw with like the sit and the basic obedience and teaching the owners what to do, now we're gonna do the sendaways, so sending the dog to an actual place command, as well as uh, recalls. So it's, it's a really easy concept for a dog to grasp. We ask the dog to do the recall, you say come, it shuts off, you tell them to go to their place, and these are things he already knows. So we're gonna get into that now and show you guys how to do that. Got my long line here, it's a 15 footer. Pillow. Yes, good pillow. So again, we're doing this for a couple different reasons. The main reason is, is for him to understand that compliance is what shuts it off. So when we apply it outside, when he's reacting, that pressure turns on and he's like, oh, I know what I gotta do to shut it off. So the concept and the foundation that we've built of escape training will click with him once he goes out and he starts to react and try to drag three grown adults down the road we can use this. So use Leave your pager. It. This is where this comes in. Oh. Leave it. Leave it. Walk. Heel. Good heel. See that? So now you use the pager then. Yes, I did. Yep. Okay. That's it. Just sort of leave See it. how it... Yeah. He goes, oh, whoa. Now you move on. So that's what happened is he cut in front of you. Yep. And I just said, leave it. What the hell? And by the time he could try to figure out what that was, you were off and moving. In real time, it would be heel. Good heel. Hey, what's that? Don't leave, you know, leave it. Don't worry about it. You just keep moving. So instead of trying to freaking fight this dog, yeah. which we found out yesterday it took three people to do, yeah. use that button. Technology. Boop. Okay. I wish more people would read this. Please obey the leash law. Yeah. Over here. is as soon as he starts to like build, pager and just keep moving. Leave it. How you guys doing? Good. Good boy. Okay, break. Nice. Good. Just like that. Pager, move on. This is a situation where I'm gonna go off the path. So see him building? Yep. Cooper, leave it. Leave it. Good, leave it. Hello. Hi. Good, leave it. Thank you. Good, leave it. I only pushed it once, so and you, yep. And, you and said, when you said leave it, you pushed it. Yep, but one thing I noticed is he was constantly checking back with you. He cared more oh. about where you were than them. He's more protecting you, and I'm probably not gonna have many issues with him on the leash, which is why he's so explosive with you on the leash. Yeah. So you may be dealing with more of a protective thing with you than anything. Good, he starts to build, leave it, bang, good. And then you yeah. pop off to the side like this, good heel, and then you just move on. Or I think what you did, is if you're that lady, yeah. oh shit, down, 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 and then boom, break. Yeah. Cause you yeah. told him, I, I'm nervous, Yeah, I did. protect me. Yeah. Good boy, Coop. Good boy. I think the success that we're seeing is just not forcing him into positions to make him nervous. Cause he's probably passed 15, 20 people yeah. without any problems at all. It's good for him. I mean, the dog's barking at him and he's not flinching. Desensitization yeah. for her more than anything. Yeah, for me, it's my training. <laughs> he's just, oh, oh, fine. Heel. Go, heel. I hope the dog says the same thing. Yeah. I didn't care. Did he ignore it? Yeah, he didn't oh. care. I want to be friends with that guy. All right, let's act like we're looking at something. Alan, you need a new uh, ladder? If you're hanging out here, there's kids, there's people, there's wheelchairs, there's dogs. Not a care in the world. But I think if the more you alert him that something's wrong, that's where he's gonna have a problem. If right now I said, oh my God, what's that? What's that? Oh, you guys would be like, what, what? And it would freak you out. Your heart rate would go up, adrenaline might kick in, you're scared, you're running inside. If we're just on our leisurely walk and all of a sudden I go, oh, down, 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 down. And then he, boom, he locks in on that person and he's so in tune with you and he's so protective of you, not only because he's a bore but because he doesn't get to see a lot of people that he just targeted a person and he'll run after him, he'll jump on him, he won't attack him because he doesn't want to hurt him. That's a problem and I got to protect the problem. All right, so now we're gonna introduce Cooper to a brand new person. The big thing, guys, is your confidence, the way that you handle him. Let's go. Do you know Cooper? We don't. 
Cooper has a hard time meeting new people when he feels agitated. He's really friendly and he's really sweet, but he's strong and powerful. So some people get a little nervous around him and I don't, I don't blame him. All right, Kyron, why don't you and I just walk this way really quick? Let's go, bud. So when you meet new animals, specifically dogs, if they're nervous or unsure, the first thing you wanna do is just do what you're doing and just hang out. Because what a lot of people do is they do, they do this or they do this and then that makes a nervous dog more nervous. So now what we're gonna do, Kyron, is I'm just gonna have you walk this way and I'm gonna have Cooper just trail you. And so what I'm doing right now, Kyron, is I'm just having Cooper smell you. Because dogs learn through smell. Cooper, sit. Good. So say good sit. Good sit. Good. Now, you'll just hold this down. Good, and just put it right in his muzzle. Yep, like that, good. So what we're doing here is we're watching his body language more than anything. We're watching his ears, right? So they're not too alert, because when he gets alert, watch, maybe we can get him to do it here. See his ears flip up. So when he's meeting you right now, he's nice and relaxed. He's looking for more food. His tail was bobbing back and forth, which is good. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have you take this and we're gonna walk around the car together. So let's just go. You're in charge, so you're, you're facing forward. Good. So tell him to leave it. Leave it. There, I hit the pager there, good leave it. So there's a dog over here barking. When he, when he got worked up about the dog, did you, see, did you see how he did what I was talking about? His ears perked up and his hackles went up, which he got alert. He's trying to make himself big and bad. And then you said leave it and he left it. All right, so now you're gonna tell him to heal and you're gonna walk forward. Okay, heal. What made this okay was when he came out, his tail was immediately nubbing. Now, when the other guests come over, yeah. we're gonna have you do it and see if it changes. There you go, there you go, keep walking, keep walking, keep walking, there you go. Good job, good, so give him, a, give him a release. That'll get better as you go, but that was it. Pager and then right stimulation. He backed right up against you. See how he's kind of amped up? Cooper, like come, yep, you just, somewhere. come, good. Sit, good, down, good, down. Just do a little obedience with him. Cooper, come, good, sit. So I'm gonna replace, leave it with good just cause it won't make sense right now. Cooper, good. Like, don't mumble it because you, Cooper, leave it. Yes, good, leave it like that. Good boy. Okay. And you could even practice here. Let me see a piece of food. <laughs> Sit, leave it, uh, uh, leave it. Good, leave it, heal. Leave it, yes. Good, leave it, leave it. Good, leave it, leave it, good, leave it. Good job, buddy. I just keep walking. Good, hello, good morning. Hi. That was beautiful. The only thing I would have changed is, is don't do that nervous, because you're saying, don't mess up, don't mess up. You just gotta say, hey man, Cooper, heal. Good heal. Yeah, we're doing our thing. Like, don't build him like that. Because that time there, because you gave him all of that positivity when you're walking, Cooper, heal, good heal, Cooper. Good heal. He, did, he didn't even build on that person. You're gonna get better as you go, but just know that if he makes a mistake, it's likely gonna be because of how you set the situation up. So yeah, I think, I think he's doing really good. I think that you guys now have the tools and the education and the confidence to know that you can do the things you wanna do. There are a lot of people out there that are in your situation that don't have the means to get me out here. And the next step for you guys, you know, would have been thinking about euthanasia form because you just didn't have the know-how, you know? So there's a lot of, there's a lot of people who euthanize their dogs for way less than what he's doing. You know, deep down he's just a really sweet dog. And... Oh yeah, from where he was four days ago to now. I know it's us, and I know you're training us and not the dogs. I don't think I've ever had a behavioral situation where I've had to train the dog ever. And that's what I want to say when people reach out. My dog did this. I'm like, well, what would you do? You know, or what you didn't do? And like I said, if he was just a little yip yapper, you guys wouldn't have had me out. It would have picked him up and walked back to the car. But because he's so powerful, that's the thing that makes it urgent to get figured out. So we thank you guys immensely. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go catch fish. It's past time, won't help me get it.